Before we finish today, another story, another piece of news. And, and I'm not just saying this, we covered this two weeks ago on Jeremy Carr Live because it is something that really, really resonates with people but you hear more and more about. Uh, on Thursday, May the 11th, South Yorkshire police were called to South Street in Highfields in Doncaster where a child who was attacked by a dangerous dog had been taken to hospital with, to hospital with potentially life changing uh, injuries. They'd received reports of a child being attacked. It was um, an American Staffordshire Bull Terrier from a property. Uh, the six-year-old boy was taken to hospital. Um, it, so many of these stories come out, right? So many of these stories about dangerous dogs and people jump up and down and they say they're not trained correctly or you're buying them off the internet. We thought, let's talk about this this morning. I'm delighted to have on... Um, uh, Ryan O'Meara, who is the publisher of K9 magazine, ex-dog trainer, a uh, good friend of mine. We've talked before. Ryan, welcome to Talk Breakfast. How are you, my friend? Good morning. Um, you would understand, Ryan, that every time another story comes out, yes, you're a dog trainer, and I know what you're going to say, but people, this is really at the forefront of people's minds. Give the audience this morning your take on this, my friend, if you'd be so kind. Well, unfortunately, this is another attack, and I, I feel like I've been doing this for 20 years. Each year, I speak to, to people like yourself, and they say, what's going wrong and what can we do? I propose solutions. The big animal welfare organisations have proposed solutions. Successive governments have ignored them. And ultimately, what we have to do is accept we're all on the same side. This isn't one of those controversial issues where there are people out there that want their dogs to be attacking children. We want there to be an end to this. The problem is we've got a law that has failed completely since 1991. We've seen dangerous dogs increase. We've seen attacks by, by dogs going up. And yet we've done nothing to actually rectify that law. Other countries have. Other countries have actually said we would like solutions to this problem. And they've tried to enact laws such as compulsory dog training and making it harder to acquire a dog. Whilst what we do is we say, how can we solve the problem whilst doing nothing? Right. So let's take those two things. Let's start about acquiring a dog. I'm not, uh, I don't have a dog, so I'd be the wrong person. I was talking to Peter Carbell this morning. He says it is utterly ludicrous that people can buy a dog online without any idea of its, as, as you talk about its background, its breeding, untrained, terrified probably, when there are thousands of dogs in rescue centres. The late Paul O'Grady made much noise about that to, his, his, to, to, to many people's delight. Why is it so easy? I mean, I was talking earlier about you can get machetes on the internet, you can buy dogs with that, just like that, and they could be anything, right? That needs changing. Absolutely. I think part of that also explains the rising trend in that I think we do live in a culture now, which is I want it right away. So there are people who get dogs, and this blows my mind, they get dogs because they've just had the idea, oh, the kids would love a dog, and by that afternoon, they've got a dog. Now, that is obviously a recipe for disaster. And we could do something about that. We could actually implement far stricter regulation on the people who are allowed to breed a dog. And we could actually make it so that it's trickier to get a dog. In other words, you can't have a dog legally until you've passed a test. Yeah. Sure, you understand the basic competence Completely. to own a dog. What about training? That should be part of this as well, shouldn't it? It should. And I think this is this is fundamentally where the problem lies. We have to ask the question, are we breeding more dangerous dogs? I don't think we are. I think if you were to look at dogs thousands of years ago when we first domesticated them, those dogs would be a lot wilder than the selectively bred dogs we've got now. So if we're not breeding more dogs, the problem is with dog owners that don't know enough about dogs. I call this the Disneyfication of dogs. It's people that think dogs think like people. And there's an old dog training saying, if you treat a dog like a person, do not be surprised if it treats you like a dog. And so ultimately what we've got are people who think that dogs just learn because they've told them or they think that dogs think like we do. That's a fundamental lack of understanding about dogs and we should address that. We should try and fix that. So for you, when you're saying, because I remember the first time we, we spoke and you had what looked like a, a, I mean, a huge dog on your lap and it was a son. Could you, we're seeing pictures now of a particularly aggressive dog uh, on a lead but jumping at people. Would you be somebody who could train any dog? Would you accept that there are, like there are humans, by the way, yeah, there are rotten apples, but what you're saying is 
the, the rotten apples are no more than usual. It's just that these dogs are either kept wrongly, trained wrongly, treated badly and react in a certain way. And us humans are responsible for that. But you would understand people's fear, wouldn't you, Ryan? Absolute fear. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and you're quite right. We can't judge all dogs in the same way we can't judge all people. There are some dogs that maybe they have particular fears or maybe they have particular triggers. And it comes down to people simply not recognizing it in their own dog. How many times do we hear after a dog attack, somebody go, oh, my dog would never do that. I'm a dog trainer. I'm telling you, yes, your dog could do that. I know my dogs could do that in the, in certain circumstances. So it's our jobs to understand risk, to understand dogs left alone with children is a recipe for disaster. And there are certain other things that you can add to that mix. So we see lots of dog attacks when there's fireworks around. Now, to me, this is logical. If you get a dog into a state of fear, that dog isn't the same dog as it was yesterday morning when it was lying by you by the fireplace. This comes down to what is my dog capable of? Every single dog is capable of biting someone and dog owners need to recognize that fact. Interesting, so to sum up, uh, you're not defending uh, killer dogs. What you're saying is it needs to be more difficult to acquire them. There need to be rules in place for training them. People need to take responsibility. And the government, successive governments, not pointing the hand at sooner, needs to stand up and do something that regulates these practices, right? Couldn't sum it up better. Regulate breeders, make it more difficult to get dogs, and make it so that people have to show that they've got a basic understanding. Think about cars. Think about if we took the same approach to cars that we do to dogs and said, instead of actually passing a test, just have a go, see if it works out. We would have carnage on the roads. Absolutely. Well, we've got carnage when it comes to dog ownership. Uh, Ryan Amira, ex-dog trainer and publisher of Canine Magazine, thank you very much indeed.